Hello, this is Paul here at MG Tracy, and welcome to a very chilly London. So, if you've uh, had enough of instant coffee and you've decided you want to move to ground coffee, then the simplest way to do that is to get yourself a filter coffee maker. Now, these are not actually as common as you think here in Europe. We tend to be a bit more down the uh, coffee machine and pod systems, but in the States, these are a staple that you'll find in everyone's house. But how do you get the best out of your machine? So let me show you a very quick beginner's guide to get the best out of your filter coffee maker. Now this is a very old machine. I bought this in a thrift store, so I think it's from about 30 years ago. But it's all the same uh, things that apply for any filter coffee maker. Now you can get these now which are non-bleached, that are sort of a brown or grey colour. That's actually much better to do. So I'm guessing this is a present or wedding present that's lived in someone's loft for a very long time before it ended up in a thrift store, or we call them a charity shop here in the UK. So although this is a, a very old vintage machine, um, all of filter coffee makers work in the same way. So um, you will have an area where the actual coffee goes, filter goes. So we need to, some machines you don't need to use these now, but in the older ones you do, so you need a filter coffee paper in there. That bit drops in there. So that's what you, that's going to brew your coffee. You've got your glass carafe that you can fill and store the coffee in. And of course you've got a hot plate so this is one of the things to be aware of, that stays hot on this model, it doesn't turn off. On some of the newer ones it will, but you've got to watch out again if you've got children that have access to your kitchen. It's not going to look hot and it is going to burn them. And also you're dealing with boiling water as well. So one of the things about coffee, if you have made it and it's been here after an hour, there are chemical changes that happen to coffee after an hour, even though it might still seem nice and warm, so it's time to make a new brew. And then at the back of the machines is where you will find a water reservoir. Now all these bits and pieces all unclip here and if it's not been used for a long time um, or it's the first time it's been used like this, all these really need to be given a wash in some warm soapy water and rinsed off thoroughly just to get any bits and pieces from the manufacturing process removed. And then we're going to run some hot water through it as well, just to finish that cleaning process before we make any coffee with it. So I'm going to get those washed now, and then we'll come back and we'll start the next phase of the cleaning. Right, so I'll give everything a good wash. I'm going to put the basket in there, just so we can run some hot water through the system. And whatever you've got, if you've got a pod machine or a kettle or whatever, you need to go through the same procedure first. And that's just make sure that you've run some water for it. So this machine just has one button which is on. So now what will happen, it will boil the water from the tank, it'll feed it over, it'll drop it in to the top of the coffee filter there and then through a little non-drip valve there it will end up in the machine. So we just need to let that run the water through and then we can get cracking with our first coffee. That sound tells you that's the last of the water, so we'll just let that finish dropping through. Now some of these machines at this point they'll turn themselves off, this older one they don't, but they'll just turn it off while the last of that comes through. And uh, then we can get ready for our first coffee. So we're now ready, so uh, I'm going to use some of the filter papers that came with it. Like I say, some of the new machines you will find it says it's got a gold lined basket or something similar and you don't actually need filter paper. So that's good. If you use your filter paper, once you finish with it, it can go in your paper recycling, obviously. So, um, how much coffee you put in? Now, lots of people will come up with really scientific ways for this. Actually, you're going to have to work it out yourself what takes the right strength for you. If you always put the same amount of water half in the jug, then you should get a bit of a, a feel for this. Remember to store your coffee once it's been opened in the fridge. 
keep the air out and really after a week or so it has gone past its best whichever brands you're using so um, I'm just going to put that in so having done this a few times I know how much I want um, you need to work that one out then we're going to put the water in the back and then dock this machine Make sure you've got it well in there, otherwise the little anti-drip filter won't actually drip any coffee into your carafe. And there we are, we'll put that on. And now we should start to get the wonderful smell uh, of our coffee as it starts to brew. Why these are not as popular in Europe and the UK as they are in America, I don't know really. I think it's just over here, far more people use pod machines, Nespresso's, Tasmo's. Dolce Sequesters, a lot of people have espresso, manual or automatic now. Um, but in America, wherever you stay in a hotel or rent a house, you'll always find one of these machines. And they are so simple, easy to use. There's no plastic waste. The grinds can go in the food waste. If you've got a paper filter, it goes in the paper. So simple, good for the planet. And I'll put some links below for the ones I recommend in the UK and the US in Amazon. I am an Amazon associate. What that means is you pay the same price for anything you buy from my links below, and I earn a little percentage commission from it, which is very nice. If you could use my links, that'd be wonderful. And I just reinvest that money into more items to review. So actually, we're starting to get the fantastic smell of coffee. Oh, that is just wonderful. Um, the Folgers is a decaf, but for me, it's still quite a punchy coffee and is fine for the morning. If you go for the Folgers, one of the red packets, um, those are obviously the full strength, non-decaf, and there's three or four versions of those, depending on how strong you want it. I, I quite like the morning coffee that Folgers do, but of course you can use whatever coffee you want. If you want to grind your own beans, you can do that and put that in a filter coffee maker like this as well. Now if you're in a bit of hurry, and you quickly need to pour out some coffee, you can do that and it won't drip all over the hot plate and then put it back and um, don't let that go on for too long otherwise the filter actually will overflow the water above it if you've got any tips for your coffee machine then please send them to me leave them in the comments box below if you've got any questions then i try to come back to all the questions within 24 hours So there we go, the bourbon sound means that's um, pretty much done. If you have a look in your water tank, you should see all the water's gone. Careful with some of this, you're going to get steam and hot water coming out of that. So now, it's all systems go. If you do get anything like this, a few little drips, they should just burn away, but every so often give that a wipe over with a microfiber cloth. So there we are, we're all ready to go now. Um, if you want to keep that coffee warm, just leave your switch on. If you're just gonna drink these two quite quickly, then that's fine. Remember, don't leave it there more than an hour because it'll start to taste a bit odd. I'm now ready to enjoy my wonderful Folders coffee. So I hope you found that useful. Links are below if you wanna buy these bits and pieces. This video is not sponsored by anybody. And I haven't received any money by anybody. Hope you found it really useful. Leave a comment or question if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Paul from London saying cheerio for now.